Well, it, there's another guy who's working himself out the league right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I, we all know who we're talking might, about. He, yeah, yeah. I, I think, think he know. might already have worked himself out of the is, league. Is it official? <laughs> it, it's official. Just C, because. CJ, I saw well, your comment today. <laughs> Your I was comment just, came up. All right, first of all, we're talking about Antonio Brown here. And we all know that he is just below the ground, just out of the league right now. But today made it official just because his agent dropped him. Completely right. dropped him yeah. just because he needs to get his mind together. And what do you guys think about that? That's one of the top agents, uh, Drew Rosenhaus. Drew is one yeah. of the top agents. For years, he's, he's a yes. legend. Right. <laughs> like, Drew got 20-plus years in the game yeah. um, with some of the best clients in the game. One of the most respected. Right. Uh, Drew Rosenhaus was in the driveway when Terrell Owens was doing sit-ups for the media. Right. <laughs> so for Drew Rosenhaus to say, you need to get help, mm -hmm. and I'm mm -hmm. not going to stand around you until you get help, that that's saying a lot because yeah. Drew has been with everybody. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, he's, he's probably like, you know what? Ain't no more checks about to come from this. <laughs> so nah. I mean, this nah. is so and it's just a bad look on him. You know, yeah. he's representing yeah. Antonio Brown. It's not a good look on yeah. him representing he, him. He he needs some people around him to educate him on the mistakes that he's making, and he doesn't have that. Um, it, it was. I, I want to reference uh, Snoop once. He did an interview on the Breakfast Club, and he was just talking about the issues with uh, that Kanye was was having. And he was like, you know what? He don't got no 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 strong black woman in his life. Mm. Just telling him like, yo, bro, you wilding out right now. He was like, after you know after Kanye's mom passed, he kind of just that's when it started going on a downward spiral. But sometimes exactly. you need that. You need the, the the old heads, the big homies in your life to tell you like, yo, bro, you are messing up right now. Big time. Like I, seriously. Yeah, I think Antonio has the wrong group of people around him. Yeah. Right. Um. Again, there's another guy dating back to last off season with his behavior with the Steelers leading to the trade to Oakland and mm -hmm. his behavior with Oakland and mm -hmm. then everything with the sexual uh, misconduct allegations. Mm -hmm. This is a guy who, he, he is crying out for help. We had mm -hmm. Coach D here a few months back. This is, these are signs of crying out for help. Yeah. You know, constantly having issues with his, his kid's mother. Constantly going on social media to degrade people he's had interactions with. He's mm -hmm. talked about Robert Kraft. He's talked about uh, Juju Smith, who has not said one negative word about him. Yeah. Yet he continues to go after Juju Smith. Right. Ben Roethlisberger. You know, uh, he, he dissed the Raider organization. Yeah. Like, he keeps going at people who aren't even trying to go at him. They're like, look, yeah. you yeah. need help. We're staying away. And for Drew Rosenhaus to say, I, cannot, I can no longer be your agent until you get help. If, if that's not yeah. the final straw, that's, I don't know what is. That's it. Right. You know. Cause but I think that he's maybe showing signs of CTE, you know. Right. Because yeah. um, usually football players that get hit very hard, they show, they act aggressively, they act all violent and everything. And that's what Antonio Brown is doing. So how can we help these athletes for, get help? The, the toughest part about CTE is you can't test for it until you're dead. Yeah. Oh. And so th this was a conversation we had before about uh, another in particular player. Um, you know, unfortunately, we won't know until he's gone mm -hmm. how bad his brain might be. Yeah. Um, but it also becomes that double-edged sword because it's like, is this really what's going on or are you using this as a crush, crutch to act out in this manner? Like yeah. Oh. Because Man. with the Steelers, and I'm sorry to cut you off, yeah. Trip. there was a report recently that ESPN put out and they talked about all the things the Steelers did behind the scene to kind of pamper him and right. cater to him because he would have these emotional outbursts. And it happened back in college at Eastern Michigan where he would have these outbursts and it was kind of like, we've got to nurture him in this way so that we can keep him focused to play the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that he's out of Pittsburgh, Oakland refused to do that. And we yeah. saw how it played out. Exactly. And then everything happened in New England. So now there's no one around him, as Tripp mentioned, who's strong enough to be like, look, sit mm -hmm. in the house for two days, mm -hmm. calm down, yeah. You know, we'll figure this out, but calm down. Right now, he's a bunch. Of, he's around a bunch of yes men, guys who yeah. they're they're just latching on because he has the money right now. He's living a lifestyle, so no one is strong enough to say to him, "Bro, put your phone down for a few days. Think about what you're about to do. Settle down, and then we'll figure this out as we go along." He's yeah. just reacting on social media right now. Someone needs to take his phone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and as far as far as help goes, you have to want to receive help. So it's one thing for us to say, look at Antonio Brown's situation and say, all right, these things keep happening. Maybe he could try this, maybe he could try that. But if he does not want right. to get help, if he doesn't see anything wrong with the things that he's doing, 
there's really nothing that we can do. He's going to be his own uh, self-destruction, mm -hmm. and that's just going to be the end of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. this this might have been the last row with the NFL for us to be like, you know what? We don't need you in this league. Yeah. Like, every time we give you a chance, you go and you mess it up. So why we bring you back? You're not that valuable to the league. Why receivers come a dime a dozen? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, as soon as you go out, look how many receivers. We got A.J. Brown coming up right now. We don't need you. A.J. Brown, D.K. We got Metcalf. Your, we got your little cousin, Marquise right. Brown, Mar coming yeah, up. Hollywood, there's always you know? a guy. Uh, th this was just a really bad week for him, though, because with that, with the footage uh, that came out earlier in the week with yeah. him and his, and his son's mother and the police being involved, and now the PAL doesn't even want anything to do with him. They gave yeah. back the donations that he gave, yep. um, which is that's going to be another hurdle now, because for a team to sign him now, you've got to deal with the backlash of the community who's going right. to feel like mm -hmm. we don't want we this don't guy representing our know. city. That's yep. a very bad. Image. Yes, it's a bad example for the kids. Right, exactly. And 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 it's like no one does it to you. You're doing You're this stuff to yourself. yourself. Mm -hmm. We we are we we went back and forth in the group chat about his actual right. actions. The other day, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't, I don't, I don't particularly, I didn't care about him filming it, but I think, you know, just going, the fact that you were going on, on live on Instagram with it, I think that's, you know, in front of your kids. Because, you know, yeah, whatever, maybe you want to protect yourself, you feel like the police aren't treating you fairly in the situation, so you want to record the situation and to, just to have it, keep as a receipt, you know what I'm saying, just in case. But, you know what I'm saying, you know, one thing, you know, the, your kids are there and then you're on Instagram live with it. So why are you on Instagram live with it? You know what I'm saying? Like whatever. They didn't they didn't they didn't stop her as fast as you would have liked for the for them to stop her from being inside the car. You know what I'm saying? But there's no reason for you to go on Instagram live with it cuz all you're doing now is further ruining your chances of getting into the NFL. Absolutely. I felt as as you mentioned, we had gone back and forth in the chat. I don't know his kid's mother, you know, I don't know what that relationship is like. I don't know anything about their dynamics yeah. together. Mm -hmm. My issue with Antonio was this has just become a pattern of I'm mad, so now I'm going to go on social media and I'm going to show you how mad I am. Right. And for him to be calling out her out of her name in front of their kids and then saying what he was saying about the cops, right? Like, you're a few weeks removed from derogatory comments you made on social media about the Patriots. You're only a few months removed from derogatory comments you made about the Raiders, mm -hmm. right? Before that, you went on Instagram Live in a Pittsburgh locker room. Like, it seems like every time, you know, every time yeah. you're upset, you want to run the social media to air your grievances. And then it, at some point, you got to feel like, look, bro, if you keep having these issues with people, you're probably the issue. You're yeah. probably the problem. Now, what I, what I want to also throw at you right now is we're also in the age where that's what people do. Yeah, yeah, but Antonio's old enough. Antonio Brown is not some 23-year-old. It's not even 23-year-olds that do that. I, but Older people do that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're, I know. We're in that generation where people do Antonio it. Antonio Brown is 32 years old, bro. Doesn't matter the age. I just, there's 40-year-olds so, out there that's going. Look at what going, mom. Listen, listen, I'm not, that's I'm, and a I'm major not, problem. I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, you know, I'm not trying to you know, take away from the situation, but I'm just saying we're in the age where this is what people do. I, Not everybody true. does it, but there are a lot of people that this is how they handle things. You know, they can't cope with certain things. They don't know how to act in a, a more professional manner. So, yo, I'm going to have to go on social media and have a rant on, on Instagram Live. Some people just feel like they want the world to know what's going on in their lives. You that's, know? that's his and makeup. It's just, I don't, you know, just how it is. Right or wrong, that's what, that's how, that's, because at the end of the day, you want to go on Instagram Live, you can go on Instagram Live. Absolutely. Now, in a situation where you or I do that, probably not, just because of the children being there. You know what I'm saying? But there's nothing illegal about going on Instagram Live. He can go on Instagram Live all he wants to. No, absolutely. I'm not saying it's illegal. I just, to the point you made of, of professionalism, like, you can't go on social media and say, oh, the Saints, that was a publicity stunt. They ain't really want me to come there. That's all yeah. the league front. Right. And then a couple weeks later, you're on Instagram Live <laughs> doing this. Like... No wonder a team hasn't signed you. Who yeah. wants that headache? Maybe he's bipolar. How many championships he hasn't been diagnosed? How many I, championships has Antonio Brown won? Does he have one with he the Steelers? He has no, he, he got the after. He, he, he went. Yeah, right. He he went to Super Bowl, I believe, his rookie year when he wasn't really involved in the offense. Yeah. N never won a championship, and like I said, the one Super Bowl he went to it was his rookie year when he wasn't a a real factor on the team. Yeah. So you haven't done enough in the in the league for anybody to make exceptions for you. Right. Or say, we've yeah. got to have this guy. Mm -hmm. 
Well, they've been making exceptions for him. No, he could have won a championship this last year, year with the Patriots. Yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, that's that's another it. conversation. Yeah. You're getting ahead of yourself. You're getting ahead of yourself. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It could have had some Listen, potential. They, they, I mean, <laughs> he would have done really good on the Patriots had he actually not right. messed that one up. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. even though, granted, I, I do think the Patriots could have held off a little bit because Longer, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, at that point, you had signed them. So you could have let it play out, you know what I'm saying, while just while the investigation was going on. And then if it came out that, all right, he's guilty in the situation and you want to move on from him, all right? Because I don't think at that point nobody would have been more mad at, at them had they just kept him on for a couple right. of more weeks and just seen. Because at the end of the day, it would have still been under this. They, they haven't made any kind of announcements in regards to the situation yet. So realistically... You would have had them for the whole season and into the playoffs, and they could have showed enough views Antonio Brown this season. I think that was their plan, um, because remember he didn't disclose to them that this was an ongoing investigation. Oh, yeah. yeah. So when they sign him, and then a couple of days later it comes out, they still kept him on the roster. Yeah. It's when he sent those threats to her. Yeah. That the, that at that point the team <laughs> has to step in because it's like, all right, you didn't tell us about this investigation. Yeah. And now you're threatening her through text message. So how can we defend you? Yeah. How can we keep you on the roster now? Right. Yeah. Now these are two strikes against you within the yeah. first two weeks you've been here. How can we defend that? Right. And we don't take some bad guys along the way and brought right. them back. <laughs> guys right. have problems. We've been willing to we deal with some things. We didn't have Chad Johnson. We didn't have Randy Ross right. after he had some issues. We've been you know? willing to deal with some yeah. things, but you got to well, be honest with us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You really can't be sending. You again. You can't be running to your phone yeah. and make threats. <laughs> wow, no, because we could justify it. Because you know all of guys that we brought on that. And had issues, you know, we've won championships. So we right. can, you know what I'm saying, justify this. But if you're going to lie to us and then, you know, as we're trying to help you, you're still going out here and, and adding on to the nonsense that you've been doing, <laughs> you know, what we don't got no other choice but to let you go, you Absolutely. know. And then obviously we made the right decision just because you continue to do things, you know, over and over again. So, listen, at the end of the day, I wish him well. You know, I hope he allows himself to to get the help that he you know he he might need in the situation to improve you know his behavior, his attitude, just everything in general. You know what I'm saying? Like I I wish him the best, but you know again he has to want that help. And at this point in time, I just I don't think he's ready to receive that right now. You know, so it is what it is. This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Real talk, we as real as you thought. Real 